Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the pretty village of East Lavent in West Sussex. It's just inside the South Downs National Park, about three miles north of Chichester. And we're going to be doing a roughly five mile circular walk. We'll have a quick exploration of the village itself before heading north to the outskirts of West Dean, then up to the hill fort at uh, the top of the Trundle for some spectacular views, and then we'll be coming back down again along an ancient track. And hopefully there'll be lots of interesting things to see along the way. Now I'm filming in the autumn, the sun is out, there's lots of blue sky, should be perfect conditions for walking, so do come along with us. Well, I've parked my car in a lay-by at uh, Sheepwash Lane in the village, making my way across the village green. I should point out, you might hear the odd helicopter or two today and uh, the sound of uh, a vintage car. Um, today is the uh, well, Goodwood uh, um, Revival meeting. Uh, which takes place at the Goodwood Motor Racing Circuit, but uh, hopefully it won't be too noisy on our walk. Anyway, as I'm heading across the, the green, passing the cricket pitch, and over to my right is the, uh, the village hall. It was uh, originally built in 1921 with additions since. And as I see, there's a, a World War II memorial by the uh, village green. Well, it looks as though it's relatively new, 2002. Well, it really is a glorious day. Now, the Doomsday Book uh, records the name of the village as Lovington, in, and uh, indeed it was once owned by the Archbishop of Canterbury uh, up until the Norman invasion. Ownership uh, eventually made its way through to the Duke of Richmond, who, uh, of course, is the big family estate owners at nearby Goodwood. Now, the majority of our walks say we're going to be in the countryside, but a couple of things to look at in Lavent itself before we uh, start our journey northwards. I've just made my way over this rather cute little bridge that's uh, taking me over the River Lavent, which is a river that rises uh, in East Dean in the north as a Winterbourne. It's nine miles long and flows to Chichester and out to the sea at Chichester Harbour. But as you can see today, it's bone dry after the drought we've had this summer. But boy, it can certainly flood in places during the winter. And this is the Church of St Mary's, looking quite glorious in the sunshine this morning. It uh, consists of a chancel, a tower in place of a, a south transept, a nave with a north aisle and a vestry. The nave is 12th century, the north aisle 13th century, and the tower is medieval and, as you can see, was encased in red brick. That was done in 1671. The original 12th century chancel and north aisle was rebuilt in 1863 when the whole church was restored. Ooh, creaky door. Let's have a look inside. Wow, this is beautiful. And there's the font on the left hand side. And there's a, a book of condolence and uh, some candles and a photograph of the Queen. It's actually the, the Queen's funeral in a couple of days' time. Beautiful stained glass windows in here. Of course, a day like today, with the sun streaming through the windows, really brings out the, uh, the stained glass patterns. I mean, look at the, the window here above the altar, smashing. And then on the left-hand side, a quite splendid organ. Beautiful church. And just next to the church is the old school that was well, opened in 1870, but uh, I think it's been flat since the 1980s. Well, we'll have a chance to look at a few other things in East Lavent towards the end of the video, but we're now going to kick on into the countryside. We're heading north along a public bridleway, and initially we're going to cross the River Lavent, or should I say the dry bed <laughs> of the River Lavent. A 
we're continuing to head northwards, fairly flat at the moment. <laughs> we're actually on uh, part of the West Sussex Literary Trail, which was established in 2007. It's a 55 mile long distance path that goes from Horsham to Chichester and it basically connects towns and villages that uh, were connected with playwrights and poets. So as we're heading along this bridleway, I've got the, well, the River Lavent, which sort of heads sort of north-south behind me, and Mid Lavent is just on the other side. Well, our first pit stop for a view. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? So we're sort of heading along this bridleway, heading north and we're eventually going to make our way up the side of that hill and if I just turn around, yeah I can just see the top of the radio mast of the Trundle which will be our highest part of the walk later on. making very good progress heading northwards. It's one of those walks though that I keep stopping to look at the views. I mean look at this behind me here. Actually what I'm going to do now is going to take a tiny little detour to the west. There's something I want to show you. Well running sort of parallel to uh, our route for a while on the west is the old uh, Midhurst to Chichester railway line that's uh, now disused. I'm standing on one of the, the bridges. The line was opened in 1881 and operated by the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway. Passenger traffic closed in 1935 and uh, for freight in the 1960s. I think the Chichester to Lavent bit was still used for gravel workings up until the 1990s. Another little pit stop. This really is your quintessential Sussex rolling chalkland, isn't it? So I'm sort of looking northwards and then, well, we're nearly as far north as we're going to go on the walk. Um, when we get to that uh, stone wall, I think it's a flint wall in the distance, then we start heading eastwards and that's when the walk starts to become a little more challenging, as you can see as it's slightly uphill and it does get steeper. Well, we've made it to the aforementioned wall and what a splendid wall it is too, made of uh, Sussex flint by the looks of it. And I think it's the West Dean estate on the other side. But now we start heading eastwards uphill, the gradual ascent towards the top of the trundle. And we're actually now joining the Monarch's Way, which is that uh, 625 mile long distance path that's supposed to represent the escape route of Charles II from the Battle of Worcester in 1651. So I think it starts at Worcester and goes to Bristol, Yeovil and Shoreham. <laughs> hole in the wall there. I wonder if that's to allow hairs in and out. <laughs> I don't know. Well we're nearly at the base of the trundle but before we start our final ascent look at this gorgeous uh, house that's just behind me here. It's called the Rubbing House. I think it's now a holiday home and uh, 
Well, this house was built in 1992, but uh, originally it was a Goodwood estate property. I think there were a couple of cottages built early in the 19th century, and they were called the Rubbin House. It's where horses pulling cartloads of wool up from Chichester were rested, rubbed down, fed and watered before carrying on their journey to Midhurst. And uh, the actual new house here was built a little bit further back from the, the path. But if I just slowly pan round, that's the, uh, the Monarch's Way footpath that we've just come up. And well, already some of the views that I can see up here, they're stunning. So I think that's the Isle of Wight in the very far distance. And there's the English Channel. And I can make out the uh, spire of Chichester Cathedral. I've always got a soft spot for Chichester. It's where I was born, believe it or not. And then panning a little bit further around. Well, there's the, um, you see all the glinting cars. That's the, the Goodwood uh, racetrack where the uh, uh, big do is on today. Aha, just what the doctor ordered. Time for a pit stop. Oh, suitably refreshed now. So let's make it up to the trundle now. Well, the word, uh, the trundle, originates uh, from the old English word trinal. I think that's how you pronounce it, which uh, means circle, and I'll explain that shortly. It's also known as St Rock's or St Roche's Hill. Um, St uh, Roche or Rock or Roche, <laughs> he was a French saint who died in the 14th century. And there was a chapel built at the top of the the hill in the 15th century dedicated to him, possibly a plague chapel. Uh, basically there would have been a priest up there that said prayers to deliver the city of Chichester down below from pestilence. And the chapel was uh, in ruins by the 18th century. And apparently uh, St Rock or St Roche is a patron saint of dogs. So there you go. So here we are at uh, the top of the trundle. So I better tell you a little bit about it. Uh, originally it was a sort of Neolithic earthwork dated from uh, what 4400 to 4000 BC and there were sort of four circular rings to it. Difficult to determine these days because uh, an Iron Age hill fort was built between I don't know 700 uh, BC and 43 AD uh, and that just had one single bank and ditch with a, another ditch around it. Um, the whole site's about 14 acres with uh, a couple of uh, entrances and uh, during the Iron Age, well, I think it was the, the Regni tribe and the Atrobates tribe who originated from uh, Gaul, I believe, that were up here. That was until the Romans came and sorted them out. Let's go have a, have a little exploration. <laughs> I've simply just got to take in some of these quite breathtaking views from up here. So this is uh, looking over to the west. I can just about make out uh, Butzer Hill and the beacon on top, or the radio mast on top, and then uh, a much better view of the Isle of Wight. Now we're up here, and this is the the track that we've come up: Mid Lavent, East Lavent, and uh, Chichester and Chichester Harbour. And again, the Goodwood motor racing circuit. That reminds me, I've actually got a, a 10 kilometer race there in two weeks time, two laps of the circuit. Well, at least it's gonna be flat. <laughs> well, here we are by the Trig Point, the center of the Trundle and uh, the Iron Age Hill Fort. The Trig Point has been duly bagged, as is tradition. I think it's 676 foot high off sea level, something like that. There were a lot of other things up here over the years. Um, there was a Masonic Lodge in the 18th century. Um, 
I think there was a windmill that was burnt down in 1773. And in the Second World War, there were a couple of radio stations here with four wooden masts. They've long gone, although there are a couple of sort of more modern uh, um, radio masts here today. Let's have a look onto the uh, eastern side and see what we can see. We're here on the eastern side, some quite terrific views and in front of me, Goodwood Racecourse, which must be one of the prettiest racecourses in the country. And uh, when I used to live in Sussex, I was actually a member here for 12 years and I don't think I missed a single meeting. It really is quite stunning. So the main grandstand in the middle there, that was built in the 1980s, replacing the old grandstand. And then uh, obviously you've got the main finishing straight and far distance is the uh, start of the six furlong uh, Stewards Cup. And then, um, yeah, the mile start is around there where they have the Sussex Stakes. And then the big staying race is the Goodwood Cup, which is over two miles. And it starts at the entrance to the home straight and then follows the track all the way around and then back and down. Because the main meeting here is the glorious uh, um, Goodwood meeting, five days in uh, the end of July. And the big sort of red brick building in front of me here, which is also a grandstand, that's the Charlton stand. And that was built in the 1990s. Um, and they had a bit of a problem with that because when they built it, the horses shied away from it at the finish when they went over the finishing line. So they had to move the finishing post 31 yards further along the track. And so that meant they had to move the Stewards Cup or six furlong start 31 yards further back just over the brow of the hill. So these days, the only folk that can see the start of the Stewards' Cup, unless they watch on television, are folk in the top tier of the grandstand. And where the finishing post is, the, the horses um, pull up uh, round the corner here. But in the 1960s, well, up until 1967, I think it was, um, they used to actually finish and then pull up up the trundle as I remember a little kid watching that. And the thing about the, the trundle, up until about the 1920s, it was unenclosed, so anybody could come up here and watch the racing for free. They then enclosed it, put some fencing around and started charging. Although these days, I think it's back to being free. Um, but uh, yeah, they have bookies and totes up here on the trundle. I remember when I was a, a teenager coming here, um, the glorious meeting was only four days in those uh, days and I could only afford to go into Tattersall's for two of the days and then I'd come for the other two days up here because it was only about 50p or something. And a little bit of history about the trundle is um, uh, Goodwood was the first uh, racetrack in the UK to have uh, a commentary uh, for the race but um, they trialled it just here on the trundle, not in the members. But apparently the members could just about hear the commentary on the trundle. They liked it so much that it was decided that they'd have it over there as well. <laughs> well, just one last thing to look at on the trundle on the northern side. You can see there's some rather menacing dark clouds as well. Um, I mentioned about the trundle enclosure. Well, when the, it was enclosed um, when racing was here, um, this was the, one of the entrances to the side here with some, some steps. And uh, going back a few decades, when I was a, an athlete, a 400 meter runner, I used to train often on a Sunday with a, a few of my mates uh, around these parts. And uh, one of uh, our training sessions included bounding up these steps. And here I am four decades later, and my knees are paying for it now. It's quite sad to see the steps sort of all overgrown. I've got a bit of a connection with them. We're now left the trundle and on the homeward leg back to 
East Lavent. And the good news is it's downhill all the way. And we're going to be following a, a track uh, called uh, Chalk Pit Lane. Uh, quite an old track actually. It was used by the locals when uh, well, a, a turnpike was created uh, that went through Lavent. And hopefully we're going to be all right weather-wise. There are dark clouds, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed we're going to be dry because neither Logan nor I have got any rain wear whatsoever. <laughs> Well now there are a couple of things just to look out for as we're coming back down Chalk Pit Lane. On the western side is something uh, known as the Lavent Caves, an old chalk pit that was excavated in the 1890s. It uh, may have been a flint mine in Neolithic or Early Bronze Age and uh, later it became a medieval um, chalk pit but uh, the origins remain questionable due to the involvement of Charles Dawson who was later implicated in a number of archaeological deceptions including that of Piltdown Man. And then over on the eastern side of the lane about 800 yards or so is something called the Bexley Bushes and that's where there are some buried remains of uh, an Iron Age settlement with medieval use uh, afterwards and there were something like 13 roundhouses and field boundaries there. But uh, one fascinating uh, object that was found around these parts was something called the Lavent Drum. It was uh, basically a carved chalk cylinder, a sort of prehistoric tape measure for use in construction. Apparently only four have ever been found. Three were discovered in 1889 in, in um, Folkton, Yorkshire, and the fourth one uh, was found here but uh, only excavated as recently as 1993 but unlike the ones at Folkton uh, it didn't have any decorations and it's now in the Chichester Museum. Well folks we've made it back to East Lavent and in particular the Royal Oak pub. Lovely pub, 200 years old at least and loads of ghost stories, far too many for me to tell you. I hope you enjoyed the walk and found it interesting. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment and do check out our Facebook page, Taves Countryside Walks. I'm going to finish off with a pint of, I think it's called Lavent Corner, which is very appropriate. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Oh, sorry, I almost forgot. Thank <laughs> you.